pompous the men were in their masculine authority. I am a self-made man and master in my own house. And if my wife so much as... But she doesn't. She knows her place. But by 1911, there were quite a few women, the Pankhurst family among them, who were beginning to get restless with this state of affairs. Those chairs are being carried in to one of their early meetings. Not so many chairs, for then the suffragettes were few in number. Votes for women then seemed like reaching for the moon. Why doesn't that man finish with those chairs? Saboteur! How the world jeered and laughed at those first brave few. But undaunted, they girded up, well, whatever it was that women girded up in those days, marched on supremely confident in their ultimate victory. What did the politicians do about these female demonstrations? Little to nothing, I'm afraid. The British Prime Minister at the time was Mr. Asquith. And you know what he was famous for saying? Wait and see. Well to the fore was a fighting Welsh Liberal, David Lloyd George. But he was too busy with national insurance and other schemes. One man was deeply sympathetic. George Lansbury was always battling for the Pankhursts. Strange, really, for they were anything but socialists. But then the cause rose above party politics. Yet whatever support the suffragettes found or didn't find, each fresh opening of the British Parliament saw their case either off the agenda or so near the bottom as to make no difference. Votes for women, indeed. Things like naval estimates were much more important. But still, we pegged away. I say we, being a woman. Aunt Agatha's method of drawing attention to the cause was to picket the house of a leading politician. It didn't get her far, about three steps up to be exact, but at least she had time to study the newspapers. Reading about such matters as the big strike up north in Liverpool, as Aunt Agatha herself used to complain, Votes for women couldn't get very far when all this industrial unrest was stealing the limelight. No welfare state then, just haves and have-nots, and ugly disputes as to the having. Such were the first signs of great social change. Though in those early days, few people looked at it that way. And what else did Aunt Agatha read about in her, uh, well, her spare time? A ship leaving Britain for the distant Antarctic. What was her name? The Terra Nova. Going to be away some time, so the papers said. Carrying an expedition that was to try and reach the South Pole. Its leader, a naval man, Robert Falcon Scott. Such a little ship, such a little band of men, but the first chapter in a great story of endurance. Endurance? Well, Aunt Agatha knew all about that. Not like...